Welcome to the Solutions Not Tip Podcast. Listen, I might change this thing to the gospel. I feel like what we've been doing on now, here preach. is is putting people on game, and I'm definitely going to challenge the way people think and how they are and what they do. Therefore, today we have the great David Martinez, a.k.a. Martinez Bulls in that. Well, actually in his house. I was going to say in the house, but we in his house slash garage, man, here to talk dog. We spent a day. We spent the day shooting. We've uh, been driving all day. We got Aaron Sims, Marcus behind the camera, man. <laughs> It's been a hell of a ride here already, man. So, David, let them, know, let them know who you are, man. What's going on? What's going on, folks? Uh, David Martinez, Martinez Bulls, owner, producer, uh, national winning, grand champion blue. Uh, that's what it is. <laughs> Look, man, how did you get into the bullies, man? I know we've talked okay. about this before. And mind you, people, I'm on the True Beast podcast. We had David he, he, uh, here with us at Nationals. Uh, he's a big supporter of Stan Smith and mm -hmm. what we're doing over there at X Dog. Again, yes, I only started this podcast to piggy off, to piggyback off what we were already doing. Um, I know that I'll be there'll be times where, uh, you know, I work with X Dog that I'll be in different places, but at the end of the day, it's all dog related, and together we bring a lot to the table for everybody in terms of the dog community in general. And when me and Stan are together, we do some great things. We Definitely. do some great things. So I, uh, I'm i glad to, to have met you via Bully Community, a.k.a. X-Dog, and everything else that's already been going on, man. So um, how'd you get into Bullies, man? I know we, we've told this before, and I could probably tell the story at this point. <laughs> Honestly, it was just we moved out here, and, and I just needed something to kind of bring me back to, to, to my roots. And it was always with the dogs. Um, I didn't have a dog. I had a, I had a pit bull when we moved out here, but I, I wanted to get in the show dogs, and they held local shows out this way. So I had to hit up a couple shows for about two years without a dog, just going to see, see the whole ABKC get down, all of it. Um, that's pretty much where I started. Met a met a local breeder, bought a female off of him, and, and saw chaos when she was ready on her second heat um, and of age. She had an offset heat. She had a, a her first heat. She didn't get it until about a year old. Oh, okay. And then the next heat, she was almost, I think she was like, eighteen months. So okay. we hit her at that second heat and produced blue. Now, now mind you, people, he's, he he put you in, put it in perspective because objectively, in my opinion, you want the dog to be a little bit over two or a little bit over a year. Definitely, I think third heat. Mm -hmm. And the third heat comes yep. at about that uh, sixteen month. To, to, you know, what is it, what, 6, 12, 8, in an 18 month time? See, and I was real hesitant because growing up, all my brother's pit bulls were clockwork. Six months, six months, 12 months. Oh, yeah. Year and a half. So I'm like, man, there's something wrong with my dog. It, it, Look, you know? in my opinion, this is just people, my opinion, you know, because they've added quite a bit of the bulldog to it, I think some of the uh, quality, if you would, in terms of the, their life even, has diminished. Um, and then you run into these various health issues because, as we know, mm -hmm. you're a pit bull dude. When a pit bull ever have problems even getting pregnant, no. <laughs> you you don't hear about no problem. No pit bull have eight to twelve dogs every time, all day, every day. You gotta make sure your fence is, is, <laughs> is up. The neighbor's dog didn't get through because it yeah it yeah didn't happen. And and with the bully, you know, again because of the bulldog, and you know, which I I did a video. It needs the bulldog to be clear, but you have to pull from the bulldog mm -hmm. and then build away from it. Mm -hmm. So once you get what you need for the ones who've done it, you got to keep moving forward. Otherwise, if you only focus on where the root, they say the roots are in terms of the staffy in the pit, it's just a cross. It's just a cross. So to make a new breed, a lot of times you do need three dogs. Um, and that's, not, that's you can go look that up. So that being said, look, I'm not going to harp too much on the history. There's plenty of stuff. Him and I do lives here and there. We're going to continue to talk a lot of dog. Talk about the things you wish you knew after winning nationals and you wish you knew leading up to nationals and after being a national champion. What do you, you wish you could have, I mean, just done better and done more of? Well, I, I was talking to Marcus earlier. We, he asked me, you know, what, what is something, if I can go back, would I change anything? I said, I just would have asked more questions. I would have done more. To me, the breeding side of it is really intriguing. I would have, I would have asked genotype, phenotype questions, line breeding, in breeding, just along the whole lines of the breeding um, side of the bulls. Like, that's something that really intrigues me. Anyone can put one and one together and create another thing. But yeah. It's, if I was doing the same breeding that the next breeder was doing, we're still going to get different results because there's that there's that little difference in there between the bloodlines that I'm not going to get that he got. So being able to know what your blood throws, what's behind it, you can kind of eliminate and shortcut those 
those um, those avenues to, to get to that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and <clears throat> it's funny because I was talking to a guy today about the koi fishes, right? And one of my buddies, he asked me about koi fishes, and I said, well, it's still not that simple. Mm -hmm. So let's just say for peace sake, again, that you have a 25%, 25.5 or 22.5 or 12.5% coefficient, mm -hmm. if there's not a concentration with that particular coefficient, from a phenomic standpoint, what happens? What happens? You actually get nothing. So just because there's an aunt, uncle, or somebody who adds more consistency in terms of blood, if you don't know what that dog has that you need, mm -hmm. then the coefficient is worthless. And, and, you know, go ahead and try to prove me wrong. And even when he's talking about the breeding side, to most dogs, you know, you get back 10 generations, I believe, and I can't think of the number right now, but in the next episode and probably in the future, I'll give you the information you need for exact. But it pulls from about 10,001 or it's like 1,001 variables. And you know how many, you know why every dog is different in a litter? It's because there's so much information that makes that dog that dog. Mm -hmm. So if you had to pick a few questions that you wish you would have asked more of specifically and applied even outside of just the genetic stuff. What was what are some other things you wish you would have asked? Man, I would have I would have asked previous winners of, of nationals or previous people that are competing at that high stage, you know, top dog um, races, just kind of what, what to expect um, as to not be blindsided by, by a lot of it. Uh, mind you, the 2020 season, you know, threw us off for a loop with COVID, so we were kind of all scrambling. But it would have it would have helped me be a little bit more uh, ahead of the game had I known, you know, how to navigate those waters prior to. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So after you win nationals, what's the next move, man? And it's something we talked about, and I think you know, there's two couple components here, man, that I, I definitely would like for you to get into, and and this goes back to. Building a community, right? Mm -hmm. So when you lack community, I would imagine, and again, I'm just guessing, so please jump in and, and help them make sense of what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lack of community, unfortunately, and ego driven by the community, what ends up happening is a guy like him might have questions but not know where to go. So if you don't know where to go, then you don't know where to grow. Right. <laughs> and and then sometimes people tell you things deliberately to fuck you up, mm -hmm. especially if you're winning. So people lack positive intentions and a true competitive nature which means I don't even want to compete unless you're at your best That's right. and when I got back into the breeding stuff part of my challenge was is I couldn't find the people that I used to know that knew everything and they didn't know everything but they were they were just so heavily involved with so much history that you could ask them jokers anything mm -hmm. I mean anything and they could either figure it out <clears throat> or solve the problems so part of my job has been connecting people in ways that they've never, they've not been connected in 10 plus years. And some of the oldest videos are 10 years old on YouTube about the old school bully community and bully badass TV. And I remember YouTubing American Bully. Mm -hmm. First in it's eight year old video. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> everybody's selling them, everybody's claiming them, everybody's, you know, it's got a big ticket on it, but there's no information about it. They're not putting the, the content out there like that. And they're not, it's, it's, I'm not sure if it's a lack of resources to get the content man, out. Man, ain't no lack of resources, man. They sell it off for ten thousand dollars. It's just the it's just the <laughs> like you said, there's no there's no community to, to go around it or to start there's no that, that one that one missing link to start everyone off. There's you gotta get the ball rolling somewhere and what you and Stan have been doing with the podcast with bringing light and shedding light to some of these animals in, in, within the registry, the French bulldogs, the oldies, the American bullies. That that gives people from outside world a, another perspective to look into. So we need that. We definitely need that within the community for it to grow. So so I mean, and then that just goes back to, I mean, part of the challenge is being, who do you go and talk to? <laughs> I mean, who do you really go and talk to to learn and and uh, and grow from? Man, for me, I I try and look for honestly, I try and look for some of the breeder judges. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the judges were breeders coming in. A lot of them were more so enthusiasts that eventually got into the breeding side of it. But I, I try and, and and pick the brain of the Chris Whites, the uh, the Chris Moores. Um, yeah. John Surtees has been around for a minute. You know, just I, I I like to you know get get some solid information for these individuals. See how much the game has changed from when they first started to where we're at now. You know, I know a lot has changed with the breeding of the dogs. You know, the color is a whole new thing. I don't, I'm not a color man. It's health first always. Um, but these are people that can kind of point you and navigate you through 
some of these uh, issues going on with the breeds now. <laughs> and what is, you know, in your opinion, you know, what are some of the, the issues that you wish or that you're going to help fix? Man, we're looking, hope, honestly, we're, we're hoping to shorten up the backs on these dogs. That's my thing. That's one of my pet peeves is, is the long backs. The long back of Notre Dame for you people out there listening. And high rears. Oh, we're, my God. Man, if, if there's anything that we can do and that I'm hoping that we can work on it and help other programs fix within their kennel would be bringing it down, you know, bringing the back down to make the dog more proportionate. There's a lot of dogs that you see that have the nice fronts, um, beautiful shoulders, bone mass. <laughs> head all of it but the minute they turn around it's like ah man i don't you know you get that little sour taste in your mouth so i'm not no, like a trapezoid exactly exactly <laughs> okay so we got a hybrid problem we'll go one day into the medical um reasons why that's not proficient i think there's one dog uh, and unfortunately i think it's the uh, i don't know if it's the cattle or another one where by design that rear needs to be high because mm -hmm. the way in which it travels to uh, hunt prey it's like the feet have to, I mean, mm -hmm. I'll go back and read, but it, I mean, it's by design, man. It's, <laughs> it's magical when you go in and study this dog stuff and how it works. The anatomy and all of it, their man. movement is so much different. Yeah, yeah, and it is different. And, you know, just think about a high rear with a back. If you, you know, we call them high behind in the ghetto. A girl that got a big old booty and that thing sitting on her back. You look up and she's about 80, and so that back is, is screaming. <laughs> it can't support all that ass no more. Nope. <laughs> and realistically, that hip, them hips is out of place. The hips is going. And, and hips themselves, I live on the human side. They're billion dollar industry people. And mm -hmm. they lead, uh, you know, people into knee problems, back problems, ankle problems, you know, uh, sciatic. I mean, they, I can go down a lot. It's just not a good thing. And I'm and it's more I'm learning and hearing you guys talk about the dog's anatomy from a, you know, more of a basic standpoint. I'm like, oh. That's just how humans are. Mm -hmm. And it's going to help me even make put out information that I believe can help long term, even in solving for problems. So as now a, you know, for one, you're an advocate. For two, you're somebody who wants to see the, the, the community grow. For three, I mean, that's why we're here. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think you'd ever imagine that you'd be in the position you are no, right never, now. Never. And, what, and go ahead, tell what, what would you call the position you're in currently? Yeah, I, honestly, I, there ain't no word for it yet. Um, blessed is the, first and foremost because this is like you said we we never pictured ourselves being here i wanted to champ out a dog um let alone that was something that i wanted to buy yeah. Not, i never thought of i'm going to produce my own dog and take this dog as far as he was um, the team behind him was just amazing it, it's been great you know just being able to step outside and witness your own dog um, the poetry in motion the movement of the dog it's it's beautiful to see <clears throat> now let me ask you this i'm gonna ask you this does do you think it hurts you in any way, shape, or form by hitting the lottery? Does it hurt me by hitting the lottery? <laughs> I mean, no. But um, you win it all at once. It, it's kind of you get that lump sum all at once. Uh -huh. You're kind of like shit. What what am I gonna do next? You know, nationals was kind of the same effect. You know, we we I don't want to say we were anticipating it because we knew there was gonna be high quality dogs there. It was gonna be it was gonna be a tough task to pull that win off, but. I knew the caliber dog we were bringing in, and I knew it was a possibility. Yeah. So, um, man, the lottery, the lottery was good, but now you got to figure out, you know, how to how to dividend and break bread with everybody and, and make it so that everyone's eating within the community. And, and the key word in that statement is dividend, my friend. When you think about dividends, people, we invest in stocks that pay us. Mm -hmm. Blue, it's a beautiful thing to have a beautiful dog, and in this particular case, it's important that the dog turn a profit. Unfortunately. For some people who don't get that, but mm -hmm. that does mean it's just the, the type of care David, myself, Aaron, and many others put into these dogs is better than the care, better care than we put in our own lives. Yeah. <laughs> I don't take my life as serious as my dog. My mom, my, I, I take you know, I, I, I take my dogs, and you know, maybe one day I'll have my mom's to remind people that 10 years ago, even when I just got into the bullies, I, you know, she said, Them dogs eat better than he does, mm -hmm. and I would come home from being a chef, take my my cookie jacket off and make everybody's food you know and it was chicken that i cooked green beans along with dog food mixed in and i remember putting it in a big container and setting it down and, and that's that started years ago and i have a picture it's probably one of my favorite pictures of my boy champ mm. and that joker's coat is just i mean and it's what an iphone 4 <laughs> but but the sun was hitting and i mean i was like i got off the phone to tell you i'm like Yo, hold on nigga. <laughs> I got I gotta take this picture right now. I'll call you right back. The sun is 
beaming. Right on. Him. Oh man, and it was it's like I said, it's one of my favorite photos ever, man. So I'm I'm you know <clears throat> I'm I'm an advocate as well for you know just quality. Uh, and quality encompasses health, mm -hmm. um, it encompasses temperament, it encompasses time, it encompasses energy, it encompasses education, it encompasses leadership. Yeah. So what are some things you're going to do to help lead and lead the way? Because as you said, you wish you could have talked to some people and, you know, I think there was a, an American bully named Rockstar. Mm -hmm. Th and that's all. <laughs> I don't know the man, so if you hear this and somebody says it, it's just like, what do you, it goes back to what do you do next? Man, I, like I said, I'm 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 still learning. I'm not like I said, I'm not a I'm not a breeder. I don't have multiple dogs. Um, I got lucky and produced blue, but that dog, that one dog, has opened up so many doors to where I've gained so much knowledge on the breed. I've I've asked the questions. Um, like I said, I'm still learning. You learn something new every day. If you're not learning every day, you're 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 wasting your time. I mean, honestly. But I I'm hoping that someone can kind of see. How, how my story kind of started and and take that step because at first for me it was more nervous I didn't you know I didn't know what I was doing I didn't want to make myself look stupid out there if I'm gonna do something I'm gonna try and do it to the best of my ability and, and a two year investment man presenting the best product people, possible you know? how many people you think would take two years to find the right dog buy the right dog breed to the right dog and be patient enough to get it right not a lot <laughs> I, we could have sat down after the first dog didn't pan out yeah. But I knew I knew that the dog that I that I wanted to base my my foundation off of I knew bred to the right female he would produce what I was looking for yeah that would give me my foundation and that's exactly where we started you know I looked at that dog uh, Champion Nino JC two hundred nine bullies and and he's a beautiful dog I wanted to replicate that and I think we got it I think we improved a little bit on him and and just like I said asking the right questions being around the right group of people right minded people you you you'll limit the time you spend on getting to that end goal. Okay, so let's 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 get into a little bit more. Look, you don't got to answer my stuff, but what are some things you wish the ABKC did better? Uh, just, I mean, you've got people traveling to these events from out of state, from, you know, out taking hours out of their weekends and stuff. Um, a little bit more communication and, and, and promotion, I would say, as far as, you know, getting the breed known, getting the registry known, it would help everyone in the long run to to market to the outside community. Um, you know, put stuff in newspapers, make make you know, run an ad online, anything like that. Just kinda spotlight yourself more, give yourself some a little bit more of attention. Um, the outside community needs to see us. You know, if we want to be seen, we want to make it to the big stage, we need to start reaching out to everybody. There you go. And what are some things you think the community should and could do better? Just just put the egos aside. Uh, pick up your dog shit, first and foremost, <laughs> at the shows. Pick up your poop, man. Uh, just just be better um, better advocates for your dogs. Your dogs can't speak. Your dogs can't, you know, can't express themselves with words. You you are you are their advocate. You know, you should you should hold yourself just to the same standard that the judge is judging your dog too. You know, you want to make sure you come in respectful um, and you take care of the home that, that was given to you to, to showcase this breed. You know, ABKC gave us a platform. We want to make sure to to um, to hold that pedestal, you know, put them on that pedestal and make sure that we represent them just as well as they will represent us. I see, I see. And what would you say the future of Martinez Bulls looks like? Because it's again... Right. It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's kind of what we put into it and... And we were slacking at the beginning, and we got the right the right group of people around us, man. We got some good mentors around us, <laughs> Trev himself, Stan, um, the, the the community itself. Got some good friends, man, that that we look up to, and and hopefully with the with the right advice and right you know breedings and everything lined up, the the future is gonna be bright. You know, we we look forward to it, and the quality of dogs are only getting better. And, and I'm a, I'm a competitor. <laughs> you got that I'm gonna try and do it better yeah so, and, and that that drives evolution okay so then go ahead and do like this break down blue and the things you think could be better um, I, w I would like a little bit tighter tighter skin around the mouth um, a little bit better turn the stifle on them uh, <laughs> can't say too much honestly yeah that's and that's a good thing but that's also means you're not blind you know no. that that's the ego thing saying hey there, there's always room for improvement. You, you know, the pursuit of perfection in itself, as Ruben always says, is is 
a beautiful, beautiful thing, but it realistically it's never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. <laughs> we don't have a perfect dog. Anyone else looks at my dog, they can probably break down a couple more things. But to me in my eyes, those are some of the things that I would fix to give me my ideal dog. Well, I think it's just important to, again, be clear about things could be better. Mm -hmm. Some people see something and be like, that's it. Yep, I got it. Mm -hmm. You suck. You're like, no, not so much, my no. guy. <laughs> that's not the truth. You know, let's 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 really put that dog to the dust. So what do you think an American bully should be able to do? Because I think that's kind of one of the contemplations at times in terms of it being considered a companion breed. It should still be able to work. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it is a companion breed, but it should still be able to move and function like a dog. You don't want to have to pull this thing around in a, in a, in a red flyer wagon, you know. You want to be able to walk your dog more than two blocks without it, you know, giving you a scare, a heat stroke or Ooh. anything like that. You want to be able to make sure the dog's functional and, um, and can be a dog at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I know, you know, we talked a little bit about, uh, you know, pit bulls. Mm -hmm. If you're rooted in pit bulls, people, being that part of this dog's roots are in pit bulls, man, you know, back in the day, we got pit bulls because they could do stuff. They can work. They could fuck, like, you You got a pit bull because, not, not I mean, not just because it was shredded, not because it had an okay head, but because that motherfucker could run, hop, jump, skip, backflip, and do it, jump to the top of a, a eight-foot fence. But my dog left today. Those dogs will drive themselves damn near to death just to please the owner. That's the terrier in them, is what it is, oh, you know. Man. And that's they they love to please in the terrier and the pit bull. It just comes out in them, man. And that's growing up, like I said, that was that was a breed I always grew up with. My brothers always had them. I I love the breed. I, I love the breed. Oh, man, man. And, and again, so when you when you come from that space, I'd imagine you know. And I know you're an active guy. It's very difficult to watch a dog look as good as it does. And suffer walking around even and not function, yeah, man. Yep. And and the key word in function don't just mean walk. I mean, you can tell when someone's suffering, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like and this again, no disrespect, but all disrespect to you know the the pocket people, the people who want a dog under 12, in, 12 inches with this much muscle. You take a look anatomically, and, and you know, and that, from anatomy standpoint of a midget and a dwarf, and this is really no disrespect to them because you know they can't control that stuff, mm -hmm. but we who breed can. Nine out of ten of them, they, I mean, it doesn't look comfortable, right? No. They have bad hips. They've got, you know, organ challenges. Elbows and shoulders for me. You get you get yeah. that much mass on a short dog. It's almost, you know, you're weighing them down. Yeah, and, and you know, and again, I live on the human side, but their quality of life to be, it's, it begins to diminish. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I personally ain't buying no dog, creating no dog, breeding no dog. That ain't going to last longer than five years. Five years, they just getting going. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> they are just getting going, man. So I'm glad that you have a history of health because I think, in my opinion, one of the healthiest dogs a person can own is a pit bull. Yes, you know, if you go back to that dog, I mean, you didn't run into the issues and now you're watching people run up $10,000 bills over the course of one dog's life. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even remember a pit bull <laughs> uh, having those type of issues, man. Man, this will this will, this will will lead into a whole other avenue. I'm sure Stan will kind of chime in on it whenever he hears on it. But, yeah, you didn't have dogs with food allergies back then. You didn't have all these things. Let me run them to the vet for this little thing or that little thing. Now it's like it's... it's it's something in the food or something genetically that that's coming up in these dogs, but we we would love to pinpoint that and work around it and it has figure to out a, you know figure out something that that we can do to to help these dogs you know because some of these dogs are dying young. Some of them. Some of them. A lot of them are dying young, it and it shouldn't be like that. You know, we should we should definitely health test and whatnot. And I'm gonna put it out there right now. I told Aaron earlier, blue OFA cardiac clear. Just so you guys know, you guys need that information, I'll email you the form or email you the info, man. He's OFA, cardiac clear. Now, I, I'm i I'm more interested in the cardiac side of things, so do tell us about how that works, and I'm, I'm familiar, so just so we're clear, but tell them how that works, why that's important. It's important because, I mean, us owning a stud, anything comes down to these puppies, something happens with that litter, the breeder's first thought is going to be, it's not my dog. <laughs> it had to be something with the stud. Yeah. You know? And the first thing, especially in the bully community, because of prior issues, prior dogs dying so young, it has come to, you know, to surface that it is something congenital, something with the heart going on. Um, that is... And guess what? We're the most... What, what dog has the most heart... Pro has a lot of heart problems? Yeah, oh, wow. 
Prove me wrong, people. Go look up who, that bulldog and his heart issues. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's one of the biggest things that I had heard is the health, the health of the dogs. And that's, like I said, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right. I don't want to train wreck. I, I got to make sure that what I'm, I'm not selling someone a dream. I'm selling them a legit product and it's backed up by, you know, by medical records, by, you know, health tests, all of that. I want to make sure that they're comfortable with their purchase and their, their business dealings with us. What do you think the downside to health testing is? The downside is, I mean, it, it can it can really it can really hurt a lot of people as far as if, if they're on you know thinking they're on track for for a, a good program and they have come to find out their dog has got all these genetic disorders and stuff that's definitely going to hurt them in the long run because now again they got to start from scratch. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're patient and if you're really about the breed, not the money. That's something that you'll eat that, you know, you'll take the time to, to create the better dog. So let's have a conversation about the, the OFA side of things, because I personally disagree with the OFA stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's one of those, when you go and read PIN, you mm -hmm. do the studies on the PIN hip and the, you know, just the OFA in itself. Here's the challenge for me personally. And again, you did it, so mm -hmm. I'm not ever going to do it just so we're clear, people. Mm -hmm. Anybody buys a dog from me, I don't give a fuck what that OFA say, just so we're clear. But but the OFA, because two great dogs can still throw bad hips. Yeah, oh, definitely. But even more importantly, if you look at the root, there is no dog who has more bad hips than a German Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And that breed has been around for, fuck, I, I'll look it up, but it's been around for a long ass time. <sighs> yeah. A dumb amount of time. Yep. And that dog's creeping like O.J. Simpson at dog parks. And I saw one the other day. And when I mean suffering, I mean that dog. That hips was bad, but it's very common. Yeah. Labrador. So from a, from a science standpoint, I've lived in the science space for some long time. When we collect data, mm -hmm. we collect data so we can learn. And then we apply the data and we find solutions. And part of the problem is, is where is the problem? Mm -hmm. So is the problem in the breeding or is the problem in the dog? Is it a problem with the food? Is it a problem with the bone? So, I mean, you know, nutrition and, you know, in the larger breeds oftentimes have more hip problems too. Yeah. So when someone says, hey, did you do an OFA? And I ask him for what? You know, you want to go, go study OFA. Walk me through every, and then we'll talk. Mm -hmm. Because only then, do you look it up? Whew! The German Shepherd been around since 1899. 1899. And them jokers have had bad hips for almost 100 plus years. Yep. Don't tell me about no OFA people, just so we're clear. <laughs> now, he ever asked me about no OFA, you better know what doctor created it. And I do mean that. Just like when I use people who used to call me religion. I said, you know, and, you know, Jehovah's Witness is going to get a little tight. <laughs> have you listening? But I said, you know who Charles Taze Russell is? <laughs> have you read his letters that he wrote? Did you know that a lawyer is the person who turned it into a religion on his dying bed? I said, don't get me started on ever knock on my door without knowing all your facts. Because I know your facts and your truth. So I repeat, if you ever come to me with that dumb shit because you heard somebody say it online, we're doing good for you. Good for you. You'll see videos. You'll see content. My dogs, I, I got a bully now and I remember taking him to a show. It's frightening actually. Mm -hmm. This is the first time I get back in the dog space. I got champ. He's seven years old. I'm at a dog show in Dallas, Texas. And I say, champ, up. He jumps on the table. And he's sitting next to me. I actually have the picture with him sitting next to me on the table. And people are like, man, that dog looks good. He's classic. Old school classic. And they're like, how old is he? I said, seven. He's like, seven months? I said, no, seven years old. And it blew him away because, and the dude stops the woman hosting the show. She said, I don't even know a bully who lasts past five years. And I go, are you fucking kidding me? I put, I literally have one of my athletes in another photo that I posted recently that played at Tulsa. Mm -hmm. I still put my ex-dog vest on, on champ. And he still had to give me two miles every day with the ex-dog vest at seven. So I'm like, what are y'all doing? Which is again why I got out years ago because I just saw it going left and too far left in a way that I didn't want to play. And then I got what we call stage fright because I'm losing champ. He's getting older. Yep. And I didn't have nothing from him. Mm -hmm. And for me, there anybody who's ever thought of a dog, people who never had dogs, posted this dog because they couldn't they like, how's this dog so chill? How is he this? He was the coolest dog in the world. 
and he played and he had a good time. He was a tri blue. This is before tri was a thing. This is 10 years ago. We were still in that. You got to have a blue. Yep. Tri blue ain't no fucking pit bull or no blue. That ain't no real. That's a Rottweiler. That's you know? a Rottweiler. Yeah. Or a Doberman. It's mixed with something. There you go, man. Yeah. That's that's the time. I was there when they was like yep. just introducing tri blue and it was a fuss. Just yep. like back in the day, blue and so many other colors, man. I seen, I seen a lot of change, but I stopped breeding. And uh, got out of it even yesterday. Somebody said, remember, I was trying to breed a gem. You probably don't remember me. Literally got the message. It was a long time ago. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't remember you. But they still remember Champ. I see you don't have Champ no more. Champ was the man. Champ was the man, people. And again, like I said, it, it, it got me a little scared. So I went and bought five dogs. Yes. <laughs> That's a good way to fix that. Now I got five of them motherfuckers. I'm like, I'm gonna create another fucking champ, but he's gonna be much better. Uh, up the odds. <laughs> yeah, that's right. We gonna get back to that champ days, boy. That was my guy, man. But my point is, is sometimes uh, analysis paralysis. We can overdo things. Now, the one thing, like I repeat, you're as good as how many heartbeats you have, and that's even in human, mm -hmm. the human world, you know. So I'm in agreement that. The heart and cardiac side of this stuff is almost more impactful than the OFAs because in retrospect, you might have to put a dog down, but normally when OFA really sets in or anything hip related, mm -hmm. they're in their last stages of life. And then unfortunately, your dog just, whew, it, it collapses. Deteriorates quick. I mean, and that's an, it, it don't even got to be the, the hip being a problem. It mm -hmm. literally just like, be mindful. Remember this, if, if the information we have is true, a dog ages at seven times the rate of, you know, ourselves. Yeah. So 10 means 70. Yeah. And the average person, even the Bible says, is blessed to have lived 70 years. Anything past that, they say, is a blessing. So anything past seven, you know, realistic seven years of, of a dog's life, in any breed for that matter, mm -hmm. if the numbers are true, is a blessing. And I've never had a dog, at this moment in time, <clears throat> you know, die. <laughs> Before 10, 12, 13, 14 years old. My my pit bull that I, when we moved out to Pittsburgh, she she died two weeks before her 13th birthday. So she she lasted a long time. Man, she had a good life. She gave us a lot of a lot of good memories, man. So see what I'm saying? Yep. See you you need, I mean listen, I put my dog in in, in a, uh, with a family, a good friend of mine, and they're they don't even like dogs. As a matter of fact, they had about ten cats. <laughs> and, and I put a pit bull in their house. And they traveled the world, not not the world, but quite a part, quite a few parts of it. And I was like, "Damn, Coco's still alive!" <laughs> and that was my girl, man. That was my that was the girl who kept me motivated as well. Um, and I tell you, man, she's she's thirteen years old still. Yeah. Still, she's she's about thirteen years old right now, and still uh still doing her thing. She looks old, decrepit, mm -hmm. but she still got some life in her, That's man, right. some vigor, man. So and I and I love that. So I'm breeding for life, aka just quality and again temperament, all mm -hmm. that stuff. Work, dog got to be able to do something. Um, and I know that you know you're doing the same, and I love the fact that even. Even though I, I don't agree with the word phase, you, it's good to give people as much information as possible mm -hmm. so they can apply it. Now, the key is application, people. But I repeat, with the OFA specific, now, for instance, any stenosis, mm -hmm. if you put two bad hearts together, you're going to have some bad hearts. And a bad heart is not something to play with. No. Because I don't know if you guys know this, but a friend of mine has, uh, you know, shout out to my, I ain't going to say his name. He knows who he is. We'll get him on here one day. But he'll tell you. He's got a dog right now who's on heart medication for the rest of her life. You know, and that heart, that heart um, analysis, if you would, uh, to take a look at how the heart was, two or three thousand yep. dollars. You know, and then the medicine again. Every day the dog got to go on medication, and some people, some of y'all who got high blood pressure, <laughs> you know, that's a silent killer. Oh yeah, <laughs> the, the the medicine's killing you more than the actual disease itself there you go yep and one thing always lead to another when it comes to medical so i do know the importance of making sure that valve or that that heart or those heart murmurs and all those don't you know get above a, a grade three mm -hmm. because that truly affects your dog's quality of life and that heart's ability to keep the dog alive yeah so if you had to give them some juice man again this is called solutions not tips we, we're um, again, thinking about that gospel, man. That's because I'd be preaching. That's right. <laughs> uh, if if you had to give them a solution, man, specific to the American bully, so that they could be better breeders, handlers, lovers of the dog, what would you? What would you? What's some things you tell them? Just just put that put that I know mentality behind, because it, it's book smart. It's it's uh, hands on smart. 
hands on smart, you're gonna be you're gonna be a lot further ahead than the book smart. Book smart will tell you step by step how how it's supposed to go, <laughs> but you know Murphy's law hits you left and right. So and look uh, that up if you don't know what Murphy's tell go ahead tell what Murphy's law is, man. I forgot we on here. Whatever. What is it? Whatever. It happens in happens, threes. Yeah, whatever. So it, I'm telling if you something bad happens, I mean, it's meant to happen, right? What is <laughs> that it? can happen, will happen. Yeah, yeah what right. can happen, will what happen. happen. There right. you go. See what I'm saying? And it happens in threes. So if one bad thing happens, expect some more bad things to come after. Yeah, that's right. So you think you know, but you don't really know. You just need to go ask questions pertaining to the specific breed you're dealing with. Um, and, and like I said, don't be too scared or don't be too bashful to go ask. There's, there's no, we were always told there's no stupid question with... There is stupid, plenty of stupid questions, <laughs> but you're never gonna learn if you don't ask. You know, yeah. you, you, you won't get that knowledge if you just keep reciting the same stuff to yourself. You're yeah. never gonna grow. You gotta go ask someone who's been there, done that, and is willing to give you that information. Um, put that shit aside. Put that ego, that pride aside, and just just go ask a question. Good. That, and, that'll start you. That'll that's step one. And and the last thing I wanted to harp on is some stuff that we discussed just about being men in general. You know, what does it actually feel like? Would you say to, to to feel lost? Man, it's 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 uh man, what are the words for it? I'm lost <laughs> trying to figure out the words for that. It's it's a it's a headache, man. It's a struggle. Honestly, you're 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 drowning down here without without water around you. You know, you're reaching for something that's not there. Um, you have an idea of what you're going for, but at the same time, it's not it's not there. And we as men, we were always taught, you know, men don't cry. We put that shit to the side. Crying is a sign of weakness. Weakness gets you killed. Like, nah. That I mean, we're, we're in a new age. Like, we we need we need to vent as well, you know. Um, and that again comes down to ego and pride. Put that shit aside and ask the questions. Get the help you need to to better yourself, better your environment, better your situation. But see, there's a challenge too, because somewhere I think we got away from it. And I'm a movie head, right? Mm -hmm. So even when you look at the movie, fucking 300, right? <laughs> you think to yourself. You're not supposed to be weak, but it was the love of of the country. It was the love mm -hmm. of their beliefs. It was the love of the other men they were with that they believed in sacrificing themselves to fight the good fight, which encouraged others to join the battle as they took a stand. That's right. To to, to fight. So a lot of times, I'm I'm telling you this as a man, the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is ask for help. And you'd be surprised if one of my guys is down and say his legs broke. Push was painting pictures. Legs broke. He's fucked up. So an arrow goes to his knee. It should be a hundred for the, a hundred of us that get in front of him so he can get up, mm -hmm. and or somebody to protect him so he can continue to thrive and live. Yeah. That that's how it should be, and that's a part of the reason why I jump back in because you know my belief is that we gotta save him. Mm -hmm. We we gotta save them all and. My initiative with this whole thing is to, both to build community, um, provide a place where people can learn, continue to lead by example, and I have no skin in the game. There's there's nothing that I'm getting from David, to be clear, people. And, and 9 out of 10 people, for that matter. I work with him. I want what's best for him. He has a great dog. I, I, I enjoy Love Blue. I enjoy what this man's working on becoming. I enjoy being a part of the process, and I want to see him, his family, everybody thrive. So I'm as good as his ability to learn and my ability to lead and listen, and it's gonna take us working together. Man. It definitely is, man, and, it, and it's been it's been um, it's been amazing to watch some of these transformations of some of these people you've worked with, man. Stan Smith, just <laughs> man, it, it's been it's been night and day with them, and and just seeing that, seeing him, you know, reach for his potential, it, it's, it's it's inspiring. Yeah, and and Stan, you know, we we got him on here, and I've told him first time I met him, you know. He didn't like me too much, but at the end of everything I was saying was, bro, the community, you know how much stuff you know? Do you know what you could do? Mm -hmm. That's all I was telling him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and now he's he, he's doing it. He's killing it. He just he, didn't have the right the right, the right right group around him to, to push him in that direction, to yeah. let him know, hey, you know, you, you have the right idea. You just don't have the right pieces in it to make it roll right, you know? Yeah, and, and mind you, people, I'm not... I'm not speaking to him. He's been on my podcast. We talk about the shit on our on his on our other podcast, mm -hmm. and 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 you know he's a guy that I again I respect a lot. Um, I I love the process that he's going through, and we're all going through. Mind you, I'm as good as the people around me, and I'm as great as I believe they can be. And then I have to go out like I'm here today and continue to do great things that keep them at the edge of their seat, so they stay motivated. That's right. 
and nobody's taken away from anybody's light. You know what happens when we all get together? That you know the type of light you shine. Man, I always, I always say, and it attributes back to the seventh grade basketball coach. Man, together everyone achieves more. It's a team. Man, man, that's you know it sounds like a corny saying, but it is a real, a real statement to be motivated and inspired by the people you are doing things with and for. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thank you again for letting us in your home. And, and being here and being a part of the Martinez story. I know one thing, and we'll finish here after this. I know the one thing that we connected with as well was the fact that you hadn't seen a solid video of your dog. No. And, and just a little 10-second clip. We got Aaron over here. Aaron shot. He's like, yo, can I send this to David? And I work in a different way. So in my head, I'm like, why is he asking me? I sent him the clip. He could use whatever I sent him. And he's just, you know, Aaron's real respectful in that way. And. I just start doing stuff, so <laughs> he got to there. He has a different process, and it's beautiful to be clear. But he sent it to him. He followed me. He reached out. He you know said some nice things. Then fast forward a year later, after having an amazing year showcasing Blue, he says, "Hey man, um, I'd, I'd love to get some video at the show." And I'm like, "I'll think about it." <laughs> Hold on, let me tell what I really said. <laughs> I said, man, I said, I, I saw what you did with 17 seconds worth of clip of a dog you, you've never met, never seen. Yeah. Um, I said, I, I need, I need that, that authenticity. I need that, that, um, that likeness that others in the community can relate to, but have never seen because no one's really went out there and, and recorded like that and put music to it and, and edited it like it was. Um, it's huge. That's something that the community is missing. That's, that's a major thing that they're missing. So. That definitely set us up on a huge platform, and I, I believe, given the community that content that weekend of nationals kept blue fresh on everyone's mind. Man, and and mind you, I don't even think he knew that I could do that. No, I <laughs> he, didn't. He, I think he really, he really just asked for another video of him walking around the ring. I'm like, I thought we were gonna get the video after nationals. <laughs> I didn't know we were gonna get ten videos before nationals, <laughs> and then three or four after nationals. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I'm like a loaded gun. I'm like. As long as I can shoot, I can keep this thing rolling. Mm -hmm. And that's my intent because I believe that, for one, it's irrelevant if it's if it's later. And in those moments, it really means something. So you're like, watch your dog and watch your dog. Watch your dog and watch your dog. Man, I got the, we got the, we got the <laughs> top ten, um, the top dog nomination awarded to us. Or the top uh, dog trophy awarded to us. And 15 minutes later, I got the video of it. And I'm like, <laughs> you didn't even leave the building. You're still here. I see I you in the ring. I think he literally texted me that. Like, bro. Like, how, how the hell does this happen? And your brother was like, yo, bro, how'd you get the money? He post that video. <laughs> wow. It, it was like having a marketing team. But again, I always overachieve and overdeliver. But I respect a man, um, you know, who, again, sees his future. And mind you, I had a lot of conversations about the bully and his dog and everything he was doing and what really went into it. So I tell you, I've been to three shows. One of the show that was a year before that one, the ABKC Nationals and uh, a Vegas show last weekend. And I don't hope to go or plan to. I'm not like a show person. I go where my people need me. <laughs> and, and, you know, he asked, we went. Um, we conquered. He conquered. Blue did his thing. He did what he had been doing all year long. Grateful to be a part of the process. Glad to see this individual grow. And I tell you, never laugh or, or, or look down upon someone who wants more. And this is a man who wants more and is trying to figure it out. And the more humility we all learn, the more we will be able to receive the things we do deserve because we're doing the work. Man, to touch on that note, we, we like I said, we showed up without without a dog to show us. <laughs> Even when we did have a dog, we showed up with no booth. I showed up with a little folding chair and just sat in the back with my crate. Like, don't, don't, don't put anything like that towards a certain person because you you can't measure their determination and their their willpower, you know, or their their want to win, you know. We that, sat that back. Says a lot, man. We sat back and, and kind of studied everything, and, and I knew kind of based on that what direction I wanted to go in uh, for the future of, of our breeding program, and uh, I think we're set up right now to to take that in any direction we want to go with. Yep, yep. I would I would agree, man. And I I didn't I didn't know that, but that in itself is its own 
thing. You go, man, a man sitting back in the corner showing up with a dog in a crate. It's like the dude at the shoe con carrying around his shoes, mm -hmm. trying to sell them. Mm -hmm. He sell a few shoes. He paid for his flight and whatever else, and he might have bought a pair that he needed. Yep. And then guess what? Next, you know, he's the guy selling all the shoes. That's that ball. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta get it rolling somehow. You know, you gotta get that initial push. If if you're on the hill, you push it in the right direction. You, it's gonna get moving fast. You know, uh, <laughs> we, we we was lucky and blessed to be around the right group of people that that let me know that I had something special that. He deserved to be seen, so appreciate the team, man. Thank you, guys. Hey, and and I and I've seen it all in motion. So again, people, I appreciate you listening, David. We we want to thank you for your time, and as I said, we're welcome to send you home. It's been a hell of a journey. You know, we've been traveling. This was one of the places we had to go, mm -hmm. um, so that we can continue to grow. Uh, shout out again to the True Beast Podcast, people. I sit on there. We got a lot of great stuff coming with X Dog, and you know everything's getting better by the second in everybody's world. We're going to continue to put things out that make sense and help our dogs be better. To also help us be better fucking people. That's right. So, like, comment, share. If you learned anything, as Stan says, took anything away from this. Send some of these gems to folks. They need to hear David. I've been talk telling him how important his voice is going to be, and I don't know that it's. I don't know this. I put it like this. I don't know that you have a lot to say just yet. <laughs> Man, I, I got a lot to say. It just it, I want to make sure I, I I piece it together yeah. and and put it out there correctly because I don't want to be responsible for giving anyone any false information or and, wrong and, narrative. But that goes back to the question I asked even about the lottery, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we hit the lottery, you hit the lottery and you don't understand the basis of money. That's right. Then you spend it all, right? That's right. But so you hit the lottery, you bred a dog, you created blue. It didn't take a long time. You hit the pinnacle, mm -hmm. which means you hit the peak, mm -hmm. and some things went right, some things have not gone wrong, right. but could be better. Exactly. <laughs> and, and so, you know, and then it goes back to, foundationally speaking, the people who have a deep foundation, it's rooted in fuck-ups. Mm -hmm. And you didn't fuck up a lot, which is a great thing. But then the other part that I'm talking about, and I think we harped on and we talked a little bit, is now where do we go with like, how do we grow from here? That's right. There's the challenges. And that's why, again, I found a Ruben. I had to force Sergio to talk a little bit. I partnered with Aaron. I'm here with David. And I met a friend. And, you know, even what Stan does with nutrition and dog treats and supplementation and things. You, and, and even dog exercise and stuff. I'm like, okay, so why why aren't we all one funnel, you know? Why aren't we all together? Like you were talking about the ecosystem. You, know? <laughs> you need your wind, water, and fire, you that's, know? That's... And that's that's what I personally was like. Okay, I got to tie this whole thing together because I needed the information. I had to. I had to dig. I mean, it took two years, man. Mm -hmm. It took two years for me to find just even the right people to talk to. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So, so that's that's. I'm glad you're in the place you're in and the space you're in mentally to grow, to say the least. And I can't wait to see what the future of Martinez Bulls and the other creations and another hopeful national. And best in show winner period, uh, you know. How, how, you know, coming out of this house, it'll be something to see. Be like, damn, well, you two for two, you, you two for motherfucking two. That's the that's the ultimate goal. Uh, we, we like I said, we ain't gonna rush it though. It, it took us a minute to get here. Um, rushing wasn't part of the equation, so we yeah. we know if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> stick to the stick to the plan. Uh, you, there's always there's always gonna be an improvement you can you can work on and. Uh, we're, we're looking forward to the future. The future is bright, and like I said, you put yourself around the right team, and, and you're, you're, sky's the limit, you know? Boom. And, and you heard it first, people, again. Uh, solutions, not tips, people. I've always said it. It's literally in my bio on uh, IG. I've always put it there. I don't, I don't talk for my own good. Uh, and I'll ask you this question, and we'll, we'll get off here. A question was asked of me by someone who's a psychologist years ago, and she said, if you had to listen to it, this is before Black Mirror, by the way. <laughs> if you ever watched Black Mirror, that shit's fucking nuts. Crazy. Crazy, the stuff you could do in some of those shows. But And I'm saying that because I don't think she watched it, but it was a good question. And after watching it, I said, damn, that's a Black Mirror question. But could you listen to yourself at the end of every day? And I said, absolutely. I don't talk for my own fucking good. <laughs> I know how to be quiet. I know how to be fun. I know how to be entertaining. I know how to teach. And I most importantly know how to listen and learn. <laughs> and then I just go and live. Half of my shit is, let's do it. You know, Nike says, just do it. And I agree with you that agree. too. But I'm like, let's do it, man. If somebody thinks they can, I think we should do. 
That's right. So here we are. It's inspiring too because, like you said, you you you're not the best in certain at certain areas. No, but, I suck. But like you just said, just do it. That's it. You're not gonna know how good you are initially until you try it, and and without repetition, you're not gonna get better at it. At all. Man. If you're one of the ones that that initial failure knocks you off the, your, your high horse, then you're never you're never gonna grow. You know. And you I gotta look, get back in the saddle. Rule one in business is look for a few no's every day. I used to look for five no's every day, but this social media thing, I press play and the rule is to post. We don't hesitate. I could care less what you think. I don't look at the time frames and when I was supposed to post when people watching. They'll see it or they see it. If they don't, so be it. Because in real time, I'm sitting here with David Martinez. I, I talk to this guy. I talk to Aaron. I'm, I pour into, you know, Jamarcus and mm -hmm. everybody around me. Stan, I mean, even a couple of weeks ago, I spent five hours. Me and Stan were just talking business and life and, and everything else. Like, that's not on camera, man. There's so many things that I do in real time <laughs> that, you know, most of the time, this kind of shit to me really don't count. But I know it's good because it, it's hopefully going to inspire others to be better. Press, play, post, and you will grow, my people. I promise. That being said, thank you again. Signing off.